So today we're going to spend some time highlighting the new GCM frame called 410. The 410 is specifically designed as a leaf spring kit, whereas the GCM Cross Canyon chassis is specifically for coil springs. On this frame, the spring eyes, uh, which are included in the, in the combo kit, are adjustable along the rail all the way down, and they give you lots of options to mount your springs, so you can adjust the wheelbase in the back. With the way the hangers are made, you can also flip the hanger to be the eye in the front, or you can flip it to be the eye in the rear. The servo mount works right here in the front. It sits in front of the motor mount. The motor mount goes between the chassis plate, and this is basically a replacement for the axial tranny motor plate. This now holds the axial tranny up in front, as well as the motor, in order to match up the front wheel of the, the front spring eye. You can also adjust the position of the rear uh, spring hanger and uh, there's three holes in the back here and of course in the rear of the frame there's just as many options as you want here so you can set it up however you like. In this particular case we've actually taken seven holes off the back of the frame here. The frame is 17.6 inches long as it comes from the factory and we're using this in a 10 inch new bright Jeep build so we've decided to take off the rest of the frame at the back and just touch it up at the back with some with a black sharpie and it looks great. Now the transfer case, uh, looking at the frame upside down, you can see that we've included in the combo kit the now famous GCM transfer case, which has really bulletproof drive drive in it and hardened shafts with uh, that are hardened and ground and they use a uh, flat on it used for your set screws for the drives you can use you can put as much power through this thing as you want the combo kit for the 410 also includes a, a dog bone setup to drive the transfer case from the axial mount so all you do is simply put the drive cup on the axial transmission you put the drive cup on the GCM transfer case and your center drive is done you've got a nice clean line straight ahead to run your axles for the front and the rear and there's lots of clearance as you can see now with the way that the transfer case is mounted, if you can have a look here, the transfer case could be mounted above the side brackets, or it could be mounted below, or you could turn the transfer case upside down and have it sit on top nice and high, tucked in. For our build, we had a look at the layout and we decided we want it to hang down just a little bit, and the floor pan of the truck comes just about here, so we think that's going to cover it up real nice. There's lots of room inside here for an interior. The rear shock bridge on the truck looks like this. And this shock bridge is designed to sit specifically to fit right inside the C-channel frame. And you can see here that the, the C-channel has a big slot all the way down. Actually, the entire chassis is C-channeled out. And you can slide this uh, shock uh, rear shock mount just about anywhere you want to line it up with your rear shocks whether you want to mount them in front or behind and there's three positions on the back of the mount to allow you to uh, adjust your shock angle and we sh we're sure that you'll be able to find a setup for the rear. In the front you can mount your front shocks in any one of the three positions here and if you use the top one which also holds the motor mount then you can simply run the screw all the way through the shock into the motor mount or there's two positions below and there's clearance in the frame on the inside so you can put a small nut to hold the, the shock mount on the inside if you're going to use one of the lower two holes. Now when installing the axial transmission onto the motor plate we found that it was important to make sure you got the motor plate angled pr properly so that the motor would be on the right hand side of the truck as you can see in the diagram in the, in the video here set this up like this and then if your transmission happens to have the shaft coming out this side you'll need to switch the front shaft around so the front shaft is actually leaving the, the transmission out the front of the truck now the spur gear is going to be in front of the of the motor mount now when you're mounting the transmission onto the motor mount we're using the same three screws that axial did for the motor plate and in doing so it is possible to over tighten these and actually squish the gearbox together onto the mount so take care when you're tightening it up that you can check the spur, rotate the spur, and just make sure that when you're tightening the three screws that hold the motor onto the, onto the transmission onto the motor plate, that uh, you're not actually binding the transmission by squishing it together. So you just need just enough torque on there to hold the transmission on. 
So if we have a look at the servo for a second, when we're doing the install for the servo and the electronics, I've got these great Metal Gear servos that I'm using with lots of torque to drive the front wheels and point them in the right direction. Now in our case, we decided that with our leafs bolted way up front to bring the front of the the front components of the truck rearward, we use the eye in the front turned to the frontwards. We're using the front hole on the swing section, and then our servo just happens to fit right in there, and we're going to mount it on the bottom of the plate so that the servo is below the spur gear here. Now the servo mount could be turned around this way you can have it flipped so that the servo sits behind the screws or in front of the screws uh, or right right or left bias in our case we're going to mount the servo in this direction like this so that we have a really long uh, master link going to the far side of the truck now when you install the swing hangers for the axles what you want to do is get a little bit of loctite and put just a little bit of Loctite in the threads that are in the swing hanger. So just right inside here, roll a little bit of Loctite in there and then the reason for that is because when you do the assembly this screw is first going to go through the frame like this then you're going to put on the, the little washer that goes over the screw to give a slip point and then the swing hanger is going to go on. So what you want it to do when you're done is you want to tighten the screw just enough so that it's tight and there isn't any play like this but you want to make sure that the swing hanger is free and then if you leave it alone for a few minutes it'll set up and the Loctite will keep the screw in the swing hanger and you won't have to worry about it coming out. So if we have a look at the front swing hanger which has already has the Loctite set it's uh, you can see that just by moving the screw on the inside you can get the swing hanger to move except there isn't any play from side to side so that's going to keep the springs nicely aligned. So we're going to turn our attention to the spring mounts now and as you can see we're using a stock axial truck axle and we've shaved off the eye mounts here for that are used for the bottom links and the shock mount so what we've done is we've taken the GCM uh, spring mounts now this is a U-bolt style spring mount actually machined out of solid billet aluminum and these simply clip on to the bottom of the axle like this once you shave the eyes off of the axle then you can simply clip these onto the bottom like this. The second part of the process is to take the mid plate and the mid plate as you can see has a cutout on one side and that little cutout in the bottom fits right around this section of the axial right here. So it fits right directly on top of there and when those two are screwed together you actually sandwich the axle in between the mid plate and the lower U-bolt part. Now this, this pin here is specifically designed to fit onto the center hole of the spring. This is the shock mount, the standard shock mount that comes with the combo kit. This uh, shock mount also holds the spring in line. You can see there's a channel in the bottom of it and there's a hole there for that center pin on the mid plate. And this would, when you're installing this in the front, you would want to install it with the shock mount toward the outside so it clears the frame. And when you install it in the rear, you can install it with the shock mount towards the inside so it will clear the frame on the inside when you have your rear shocks angling inwards. This part simply clips on to the top part and then you have a stack right there that holds the leaf, as you can see. And this stack will have four screws that are attached all the way through it all the way around. And when that's done, you end up with an assembly that looks just like this the axle is completely clamped inside the U-bolt, the mid plate, and the top plate and shock mount with those four screws and your leaf springs are ready to go in there. So that's our overview of the GCM 410 chassis as set up with a 10 inch wheelbase and axial drive axles and all these parts as well as the option parts we've mentioned can be seen at gcmachine.ca